Today, I'm going to be building this Mini Forum Elite Mini HX90. Now, before I get into it, I want to talk about a little bit why I got this computer and what I'm going to be using it for. Some of you may know that I have many technical interests. One of the interests I have kind of derives from my professional life, where I work with big data and large-scale data computations and machine learning. To explore that, I have built my own cluster for personal use, to be able to do some analysis that I want to do, experimentations that I want to do. I, in fact, have written a blog about that, which you can find at DIYBigData.net. link will be down in the description. I originally built this cluster three years ago. One of the design goals was to find a, a good balance for a personal cluster that allows me to do uh, reasonably powerful data computations while keeping the overall cluster cheap and, and not having to spend a lot of money. Now, there are some people out there that say, you know, for the money that I spent on this cluster, which overall, when I first bought it, was about $3,000, um, I could have spent that money on buying a really heavy-duty workstation. With a quick answer to that is most heavy-duty workstations go for far more than $3,000. And for the kind of computations I was planning on doing with big data, parallelism was by far the more most important facet of the overall design. And not just fair parallelism in terms of number of cores, you know, throwing a thread ripper at it wasn't going to be enough. Parallelism in terms of the data I.O. was important. So having many different disks that had dedicated pathways to its corresponding CPU ends up what creates performance in a big data system as opposed to having a single CPU with a lot of cores. So for personal use, these mini computers that you find around on the internet, uh, especially from vendors on AliExpress, end up being pretty good choices for building a small little cluster to do various things. Now, I built this cluster back in 2019, and when I built it, the performance per dollar sweet spot that I found was using these eGlobal S200 nodes that had a Xeon E2176M CPU in it. At that time, well, still today, the, the CPU has a pass mark rating of 11,026. And at that time, for the amount of money that I spend on it, spent on each node, that ended up being pretty good. Right? I was pretty happy with the performance and still am happy with the performance that I'm getting out of those nodes. However, fast forward three years, and it's now 2022. And as is normal in the computer industry, uh, technology has progressed. And for the same amount of money that I spent on my nodes back in 2019, I can now get this Mini's Forum computer, uh, which is built with a AMD Ryzen 9 5900HX CPU. If you look at the performance of this CPU, it, the pass mark rating on it is 23,087. More than twice my Xeon E2176 based nodes are. So I couldn't resist the urge to add another node to my cluster. Now, of course, this means that my cluster will be a heterogeneous cluster having nodes of different computational powers, but uh, that's okay. You know, for my personal use, I, the, the, the issues that that creates are not going to be big issues for me. So I'm going to go ahead and build this computer. Now, I'm not going to get into a lot of details uh, about my cluster. If you're curious about it, you can check out my blog um, with the link below. If enough people express interest, I may make a video dedicated to the overall design of the cluster and what I use it for and the various things that I can do with it. But today, the focus is going to be on building this computer. Now, as we get into this computer, you know, other than the CPU, uh, things that were interesting about it is includes this 2.5 gigabit LAN. On my current cluster, my the S200 nodes that I do use, uh, they, they don't have 2.5 gigabit LANs built in. They just have a gigabit. I did want to have a faster networking backbone so that when the nodes need to communicate each other while it's, they're doing a distributed computations, I did add a USB-based 2.5 gigabit dongles to each of the computers and then have a switch that can handle that. So one of the appeals of this computer to me was that the 2.5 gigabit LAN was built in and I didn't have to use a dongle. So that, that was a good thing. The other thing that is good about this computer is that I can install 64 gigabytes of RAM and both a M2 and 2.5 inch SSD. Without getting into the, the gritty details of my cluster design, each of my nodes has both an NVMe SSD and a SATA-based SSD. The SATA-based SSD is used for basically bulk storage 
Well, the NVMe SSD is used for work disk. Basically, as the computation is occurring and things need to spill to disk due to sorts or any kind of shuffles that are going on in the cluster, the faster NVMe disk is used. The other draw of this computer is that it has eight cores with 16 threads. The original Xeon E2176M nodes that I am using have six cores and 12 threads, so this is an upgrade in terms of parallelism. Due to my cluster design, I'm not going to be able to take full advantage of that in the distributed computation, but where that will help is some of the extra threads can be dedicated to some maintenance tasks within the cluster as the computations are happening. So that, that's important too. Another good thing about this node that I will not be using is the various graphic ports. It can, it can support all up to four different monitors. For my purposes, that doesn't matter. Uh, I'm not going to be using that at all. Now, if you do searches on YouTube, this, uh, this node has some controversy about it. When it was in pre-release and Mini's forum sent out some engineering samples to YouTubers to review, and they made some mistakes, specifically claiming that it had li liquid metal thermal paste on the CPU to help with cooling. When it was sent out in the pre-samples, it did not, and some people called out Mini's forum on that. In production, it does, and it, that's been verified. You can find other videos that tore down the computer to verify that. I would not be tearing it down. I trust that it has the liquid metal. The other issue is that it claims to have, in the marketing materials, that it has the carbon fiber outside. Admittedly, you know, that wasn't too important to me. Some people have made a big fuss about the fact that it's not truly full carbon fiber as you'd find in the automotive industry. Uh, it was more of a carbon fiber look. To me, that's just aesthetic, so I, that one doesn't really bother me too much. So without any further ado, let's get into uh, building this computer and uh, get it up and running. Fascinating. You get, a, get something here that we do not recommend customers remove the CPU coolers themselves. Well, that has to do with the fact that they're using the liquid metal thermal paste. If you get that, if you mess that up, you can actually damage your computer. So I won't be doing that. Never planned on doing that. If you want to see someone doing that, there's plenty of YouTube videos of people doing that. So let's pull this out and get to work. Thought that was a flaw in the decal, but Turns out that's actually their logo. They have that F with a slight break in it. Okay, so here's the computer. Here is that, uh, here's the controversial carbon fiber appearance plastic. Again, whether it's carbon fiber or not, literally doesn't, not too important to me. It does look cool, but yeah, it's not carbon fiber for real. But again, doesn't bother me. Uh, so we need to take open this up, take the motherboard out so I can install the various uh, components that I purchased, and we'll get right to that. Okay, let's open this up. Apply some pressure, pull it up, there we go. I do need to take this motherboard completely out to install the RAM. Uh, other people have complained about this fact that how hard it is to install RAM. Eh, I'm okay with it. I mean, I'll, I will admit that it would be easier if everything was just right here, but it's not, but I'll deal with that. Okay, had to look it up. To uh, get the motherboard out, you have to take out this screw first. So let's go ahead and get that done. And I need a different screwdriver. So I should be able to pull this up now. And 
and there we go. Now, I'm not going to detach this right here because I'm just going to install the RAM and close this right back up. Here we go. Okay, RAM's installed. Now let's close this back up on this side. There we go. Uh, next step, install the MVNE drive. One thing about Sabrent MVNE is they Really pack these things concisely and well. It was easier to just rip the damn thing open. There we go. And there it is. Let's get this screw out. That screw. Put the hard drive in. Screw it back down. Uh, this is always the part where I uh, struggle a little because. Uh, my fingers are fat. That drive is in. Now for the bulk storage drive. Good. For that, we've got to use these things here. There are two connectors. Obviously, one for the drive that goes near, the one for the drive that goes far. Um, I'm going to go with the near one. I'm going to set this up. I'm only installing one 2.5 inch drive today. Now, to pull this up. I need to take this screw off here just to loosen this mounting board enough to install the drive. <laughs> Disassembly prohibited. They really don't want you to check out the liquid metal thermal paste. Okay, hard drive's attached. A little bit more struggle than I expected, but that's okay. Get this back in place. Get this lined up here. Screw goes. Go. Silver screw back in place. Great. That is everything. That's not the way.
there you go. It is put together, ready to be powered on and tested. So I will be installing Ubuntu on this computer. Uh, I know the Minis Forum talks about installing Windows, but I'll be installing Ubuntu. And uh, let's go do that. Okay, here we are. We're going to install the uh, operating system. So to do that, first I'm going to turn the computer on. And it will, I don't have any uh, operating system installed on it. It's going to boot into the BIOS. And we're going to check that out, see what we have here. Looks like we got a standard American Megatrends BIOS. We could check out the various settings. I see all the RAM that I installed, the 64 gigabytes of RAM, are recognized at the 32 megahertz frequency. That's great. It's got the correct system date. And the time is the wrong time zone, so we can uh, let's fix this. I am in the Pacific time zone. Looks like I changed nothing other than the time. I'm going to attach my Ubuntu install drive. Save changes and exit. And you see here that it has my Ubuntu drive. We're going to install the Ubuntu server, and here we go. Okay, now we install Ubuntu server. I want to install English. Oh, I guess there's a newer version of the server than what I downloaded. We're going to update to the new installer. custom storage layout. The way I set these up for my compute node servers is that the NVMe disk, I put 64 gigabytes for the OS stall and the balance of that goes for the, uh, the data drive where the distributed system, whether I'm using Spark or whatever, we use to kind of do work on. So I will use the custom storage layout and I will set this up. Yeah, that looks right. And I want to continue. I can start any one of these later. In fact, I will be. The most important one would be Docker, but it's not listed here. Done. And the installation begins. Okay, the install is complete. So now, time to reboot into. Time to reboot into. Uh, remove the installation media. And reboot. Okay, looks like it is up and running. I have my newest uh, cluster node ready to go. This is great. So I'm not going to go into the details of how I'm going to set up this node for use within my cluster. Uh, I can make that a separate video if people are interested, kind of going over the details of how my cluster is set up. Uh, if you want to know details now, you can always head over to my blog, DIYBigData.net, and get some details there. That's it for now. Thanks for watching. Uh, do leave a comment below if you have any questions or if you have any advice on how to do this better than what you saw here. I would love to hear. Until next time, goodbye.